Hello, welcome to a very special edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at the famous Minton's Playhouse here in Harlem, New York, for this year's 2012 Harlem Shrines Jazz Festival, presented by Jazz Mobile. As you may know, Minton's Playhouse has a dynamic history as far as the lore and the history of jazz music. This is the birthplace of bebop, and some of the architects hone their craft and their voice here, musicians like Dizzy Gillespie, Max Roach, Thelonious Monk, the names go on and on. Tonight, drummer Wynard Harper is paying a very, very special tribute to one of his dear mentors as well as heroes in jazz, the late Max Roach, who used to play at the famed Minton's Playhouse. Tonight, he's going to play selections that Mr. Roach played and made very, very famous. And he's going to pay tribute to not only his musicianship, but also an honor to him on the drums. Tonight, Wynard and I are going to talk about the importance and the legacy of Mr. Roach. We're going to talk about the fame, Minton's Playhouse, and Bebop, as well as we're going to talk about his career growing up in Baltimore via Atlanta, Georgia. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Mr. Wynard Harper live at this year's 2012 Harlem Jazz Shrines Festival here at Harlem. Bebop was innovated and created for the world, and tonight you pay tribute to one of the architects, Mr. Max Roach, who happens to be one of your musical heroes. Oh, most certainly, man. Max was a big hero. It was my introduction into the music, into jazz, 
Uh, one of the first records I heard as a young, very young, not even a young man, a young boy, that turned me on to this music and made me fall in love with it was one of the records with him and Clifford Brown. So Max is uh, so important to me, man, and, and my career. And, and he, we became great friends. Uh, he, he helped me out quite a bit, always mentioned me, you know, several times in downbeat and, and all the kind of things. He used to turn some gigs on me. So, so Max was a big hero, man. There's a direct lineage of a lot of stuff that Max did in your work. I mean, the, the direct lineage to Africa, the percussion, the history of it, as well as how you write around just all genres of black and African music. Oh, for sure. You know, and, and I didn't even realize the connection. You know, and that sometimes I guess, you know, even when we think about our children or when we were children with our parents, sometimes you don't realize how much they've given you and how much the connection, strong the connection is until you get older and you start reflecting and looking back on it. And, you know, when I started thinking about it, I said, wow, well, a lot of the things that I have in, in myself were things that were just inspired and influenced you know, from Max, you know, the, the wanting to, to uh, connect with your community, your culture, uh, your people, wanting to play music that was um, significant, you know, socially significant, and music that means something, not just music for music's sake, but music that really stands for something that means something, music that's healing. The very interesting thing about bebop is that there was really no rules. It was really kind of like improvisation meets really trying to find your voice. Do you think the jazz still is undergoing it, or do you think that we still have a way to go? Uh, it's, it's going to be continually growing because every generation that comes in and comes on board brings something. Every people, other people that comes to the music, you know, even these guys that I have working for me, you know, I have guys working with me from Israel, I have guys working with me from Africa, they bring something of their culture to the table. And then we start intermingling, you know, and something else happens, and there, there you go, it just keeps evolving. There's another branch, you know, that pops out. So as long as we keep living and breathing and people keep loving and, and participating and giving to the music, I think we'll keep seeing it grow. Because we aren't done. The music is still needed. It's, it's still uh, necessary, and I think, especially in this time that we're in now, uh, is is very much needed to help deal with some of the turmoil that we're dealing with right now. Max and them had their things, you know, that they were dealing with, and some of those issues are still pertinent today. You know, don't get me wrong. I was just telling the, the, my vocalist that a lot of those issues are still pertinent today. But on top of that, we have some other things that we also have to address. So. In our trying to do diligence and, and take the baton from them, we're going to still tackle those issues they were dealing with and at the same time have to deal with those issues that we have to deal with today. You grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, and you had an epiphany, like you said earlier, about the record that you heard with Clifford Brown and Max Roach. 
you came out in the 80s at a great period of time called the Young Lions. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I'm telling you, there was this resurgence of jazz, all forms of it. And tell me about that period because you guys were very instrumental in, one, re-educating the public about the music, and right. two, carrying the tradition on. Well, yeah, I, you know, it hadn't gone anywhere. It was always around, even even some of that generation just before us. You know, when you talk about, like, Curtis Lundy, Kenny Washington, Bobby Watson, them. You know, it, it, it always going to have your periods. It's just that that generation, you know, those guys in the 80s, it was like their, par their parents were from, the <laughs> like, the 60s and late 50s. So they have a bunch of us, and, and they kept, you know, the, the environment and the community kept the music around us. So, you know, with Winton and Bramford and Terrence and Donald, you know, so all of us kind of grew up, you know, at that same period. You know, you could tell, you know, our parents being out of the 60s and music translated. I was fortunate enough, you know, my brother and I, Philip, you know, we had an older brother, you know, he was in the in age bracket with, um, with, with Curtis and Bobby and them, and he helped turn us on to the music as, as, as well as our parents. But as long as we can keep it in the communities and in the environment, that's always going to happen. You know, just like some of these youngsters that I have with me today. When, when there's a place for them, when there's an environment, you know, there's something, you know, that they can latch on to, it can be done. Jackie McLean also had a very, oh, very important, yeah, he had a real important presence in your life. In fact, one of the things I really admire about you is the fact that you said something earlier about jazz musicians have a real sense of history, and he really introduced you going to the motherland. Oh, Jackie, Jackie, you know, would, would teach us about... Uh, Africa. But, you know, I always feel like we come from that same tree, you know, and, and Max is in that tree, too, because uh, uh, Max was Muslim, Jackie was Muslim, Jackie turned Billy Higgins on, and then, uh, when, then when I first came on the scene, Billy grabbed me, <laughs> and when we would be on the road opposite each other, Billy would take me to the masjid. So uh, I, I always feel like a lot of things, too, that I learned and I got from Higgins, because Higgins and I were very close, you know, it was direct line coming from, from Jackie. But uh, with Jackie, you know, Jackie had a strong sense of studying the history and African history and, you know, and taking those classes and, and getting tidbits from him really helped me. It opened up my mind. And uh, Higgins was the same way. So that's cause a lot of the concept to the band, I, I say that that's a direct, you know, influence from, from Billy and, and Jackie, especially when me bringing in a lot of the African things. Th those things I definitely have to say Higgins and, 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 and Jackie inspired me. I say Minton's Playhouse is home. What is it about this place that 
has the world just looking at it as from a historical perspective, but what this building and what this music says. It's a, it's a lot of history here. It's a lot of history in Harlem, period. It's a lot of history in our communities. But for some reason, you know, the, the thing that we go through, we just don't, we don't appreciate it as much sometimes as, as we should. And we have to work on getting our children to know about it and appreciate it and those around us so we can take care of it, nurture it, and keep it going. We, we, of late, we've been losing too many of our places. The Lennox Lounge is going to be going soon. We just we, Over New Jersey, we just lost Cecil's. And I, I tell people now, I'm on that, that, that bandstand of telling people that I, we're in a period now that there are not too many jazz clubs in black neighborhoods. We're starting to lose that. You know, Harlem was one of the few places that I could say, well, okay, well, Harlem, there's still some places up there. But now that's been hit. You know, St. Nick's was, is gone. And Lennox is gone. It's, you know, this hasn't gotten off the ground yet. So it's, we, we don't have any places in our, in our neighborhood. And that was how I learned how to play. There were jazz clubs. Even in Atlanta, we had a club in the neighborhood. I was telling some people the other night, I was working up in Brooklyn at Sister's Place. When I was growing up, I could literally crawl, crawl out my back window in my apartment, sneak out the house, cross the street, and go to the jazz club. Go sit in, come back through the window, and my mother and them would never know how we are playing, you know, and come back in the house. But nowadays, I mean, for most of our kids, if they want to hear the music, they have to go either cross town, they got to go somewhere else. It's not too much right there in the neighborhood, and we have to work on that. We have to change that.
That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at the famous Minton's Playhouse here in Harlem, New York, for this year's 2012 Harlem Shrines Jazz Festival presented by Jazz Mobile. I'd like to personally thank Mr. Wynard Harper for his time, as well as the staff and management at Jazz Mobile, as well as the people and the staff here at Minton's. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column, as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace.